finish our discussion of drugs affecting the circulation, with emphasis on antiaginals and antithrombotics and the disease processes they treat. Our first topic is angina pectoris, or angina, which is defined as chest pain and is the marker of myocardial ischemia. Patients may present with a heavy weight or pressure in the chest, a burning sensation, shortness of breath or pain over the sternum, left shoulder or lower jaw. It can be precipitated by physical exercise, a cold environment, or emotional stress. The medication classes used to treat angina are nitrates, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, CCBs, and renalazine, or renexa. Nitrates, such as nitroglycerin, work by dilating coronary arteries and collateral vasculature to decrease end diastolic pressures and by doing so decrease oxygen demand in the heart. They are indicated not only for angina, but for acute MI and hypertension as well. For patients experiencing angina, three sublingual tablets are given five minutes apart. If the patient does not achieve relief, then emergency care must be sought. The most common side effects are tachycardia, palpitations, hypotension, dizziness, flushing, and headache. We will finish our discussion of angina pharmacotherapy with renalazine or renexa. It is indicated for chronic angina not responding to other medication and works by shifting energy production from fatty acids to glucose, which requires less oxygen and therefore helps myocardial oxygen demand. It also increases exercise tolerance in cardiac patients and does not increase heart rate or cause hypotension. It can cause the other side effects of nitrates, though, in addition to peripheral edema and is contraindicated in hepatic dysfunction. Our last group of medications for this class are antithrombotics. They are used to prevent or break up blood clots in pulmonary emboli, strokes, atrial fibrillation, deep venous thrombosis, ST elevation, MI, etc. These clots are formed after injury in the endothelium, which causes platelets to adhere to the injury site and spill chemicals that further cause thrombus formation. The body will try to dissolve the clot by activating tissue plasminogen activators, TPAs, and in this process spill D-dimers, which are fragments produced in this fibrinolysis. We test for D-dimers to diagnose deep venous thrombosis, DVT, or pulmonary embolize, PE. There are three categories of antithrombotics. They are anticoagulants, antiplatelets, and thrombolytics. Our first category are anticoagulants. The most common anticoagulant is heparin, which is derived from porcine or pig intestinal mucosa or lungs, and is indicated for DVTs, PEs, atrial fibrillation, AF, disseminated intravascular coagulation, DIC, and peripheral arterial embolism. Unfractionated heparin, UFH, requires more frequent dosing compared to low molecular weight heparin, LMWH. Side effects are bleeding, thrombocytopenia, hyperkalemia, osteoporosis, and increased liver enzymes, or LETs. Partial thromboplastin time, or PTT, is a test used to monitor the effects of heparin, as the goal is to prevent unwanted clotting without hemorrhage. Special testing should be done if a patient presents with heparin-dependent antibodies from previous heparin use. In this case, the patient may be at risk for white clot syndrome, which is a paradoxical formation of a clot that can lead to a pulmonary emboli, MI, stroke, renal, or hepatic thrombosis, skin necrosis, or gangrene. HIT-2 tests are used to monitor this potential. The antidote for heparin overdose is protamine sulfate. There are four commercially available direct thrombin inhibitors. They are diceridin, iprovasc, which is used for DVTs, bivalrudin, angiomax, which is indicated for unstable angina, agatroban, which is indicated for unstable angina, agatroban, and leperudin, or rifludin, which are used for heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, HID2. The newest medication and the only oral medication in this class is dibagatrin, or Pradaxa. The main side effect of these drugs is hemorrhage. There is no proven antidote. However, factor 7, Nova 7, has been used to reverse bleeding toxicities. Other new anticoagulants are rivarobaxin and apixaban, which are direct XA inhibitors. Apixaban has been shown to be superior to warfarin for patients with atrial fibrillation and prior history of stroke. Warfarin is the last medication in the anticoagulant group. It is indicated for venous thrombosis, PE, atrial fibrillation, 
heart valve replacement and as an adjunct to the treatment of coronary occlusion. It is also used to decrease the risk of death, reinfarction, or thrombosis events such as stroke or emboli formation after MI. Warfarin has a very narrow therapeutic range, is considered a red flag drug, which means it interacts with a wide variety of other medications and foods, and should be monitored with International Normalized Ratio, or INR. INR is a mathematical correction to a prothrombin time that is used worldwide. Warfarin can be reversed with oral and parenteral vitamin K, and for severe bleeding, a new drug, Cassentra, can be used. Our next class of antithrombotics are antiplatelet agents. They work by inhibiting prostaglandin production, which in turn inhibits platelet aggregation and vasoconstriction. The main drug in this category is aspirin, a salicylate. Aspirin has many indications, including treating fever and pain, associated with headaches, neuralgias, myalgias, and arthralgias. It may be used prophylactically to reduce risk of thrombosis associated with MI or unstable angina and preventing reoccurring transient ischemic attacks and stroke. Special consideration should be given to patients with peptic ulcers, renal dysfunction, hypertension, pulmonary disease, particularly asthma and COPD patients, and those with bleeding disorders. Aspirin should not be mixed with ibuprofen, and use with NSAIDs may produce fatal gastropathy, such as bleeding ulcers. Another antiplatelet agent is dipraidomol agronex, which causes vasodilation and inhibits platelet adhesion. Its only indication is for prevention of emboli formation and valve replacements and is used along with warfarin. IV dipraidomol is occasionally used for cardiac exercise stress testing. Adverse reactions are headache, dizziness, hypotension, and abdominal distress. It should not be given to patients given adenosine for paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardias, as it may cause fatal asystole or sustained ventricular tachycardia. Clopidogrel, or Plavix, is a common antiplatelet agent given to patients to prevent ischemic stroke, MI, or vascular death in patients with atherosclerotic vascular disease, such as acute coronary syndrome. It is proven more effective than aspirin alone for everything except stroke prevention. It should be used in caution in patients taking statins. If statin therapy is required, Prevastatin, Provacol, and Rosuvastatin, Crestor, should be used. Patients should also be genetically tested to make sure clopidogrel does not produce mechanisms that may actually increase major adverse cardiac events. Teclipidine, or Ticlid, is also a platelet aggregation inhibitor that is more effective than aspirin in the prevention of ischemic stroke. Because of its potential to cause life-threatening blood disorders such as thrombocytopenia and leukocytopenia, it is only used if aspirin and Plavix are not acceptable. Persidil and efficient is another antiplatelet agent indicated for prevention of emboli in patients with acute coronary syndrome undergoing percutaneous coronary intervention, formerly known as angioplasty with stent. It decreases the risk of non-fatal MI better than aspirin and Plavix, but is contraindicated in patients who have a history of TIA or stroke. Major complications are primary hemorrhage. Ticagrelor, or Brillenta, is indicated for reduction in the thrombotic cardiovascular events with ACS and in thrombus prevention in patients receiving stents. It has been shown to decrease death rate of MI and stroke compared to Plavix. Solostazol, Plitol, and Pentoxifilin, Trentol, inhibit phosphodiesterates, resulting in vasodilation. They are indicated for pain associated with clotification and peripheral arterial disease. Patients should be instructed to take on an empty stomach and not to drink grapefruit juice while taking these medications. Forapaxor, or Zentivity, is the only protease-activated receptor 1 agonist. It is indicated in the prevention of thrombotic events in patients with PAD or a history of MI. The last antiplatelet agents are glycoprotein 2B and 3A inhibitors, such as Reapro, Agristat, and Integralin, with Reapro being the drug of choice. They are indicated for acute coronary syndrome associated with unstable angina or non-SD segment elevation acute MI. They are given IV, and patients must be monitored for thrombocytopenia. 
The last category of antithrombolytics and the last category of medications we will discuss in this class are thrombolytic agents. They are indicated for pulmonary emboli, ischemic stroke, and acute ST elevation in MI, which is the most life-threatening form of heart attack. Medications in this category are streptokinase, a second-line treatment, aldoplase, retoplase, and tenecteplase. Therapy should begin within 12 hours of symptoms. Treatment protocols for ST segment elevation in MI state that thrombolytics are preferred to PCI when patients present within 3 hours of symptom onset and ability to perform the PCI will be greater than 90 minutes. Stroke alert protocols indicate alteplase for patients who present within 3 hours of symptom onset and no later than 6 hours after onset. It is also indicated for massive PE in patients who present within 2 weeks of symptoms. Absolute contraindications for these agents include active internal bleeding or acute trauma, aortic dissection, head trauma or stroke within three previous months, hypertension, and use of anticoagulants. As a special consideration for respiratory therapists, these agents should not be used for patients who have had an arterial puncture in a non-compressible site within one week due to the chance of hemorrhage. Other adverse effects are cholesterol embolization manifesting as purple toe syndrome, acute renal failure, gangrene, MI, bowel infarction, stroke and rhabdomyolysis, which is a breakdown of muscle tissue releasing myoglobin that can damage the kidneys. Thank you for being such a great class. I've enjoyed this journey from the drug delivery room, learning about all the potential medications our little pill may become. Along the way, we learned about many respiratory and respiratory-related medications, what they are used for, how they interact with others, some of the potential complications and considerations, and how we can better use this knowledge when treating patients with acute and chronic respiratory conditions and our patients in the emergency room or ICU. Hope you have learned as much as I have, and I look forward to seeing you in future classes.